Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. And as promised, those of you who saw this on Facebook or Instagram, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to talk to you guys about being fit after 40 as a man. I'm just gonna talk from my perspective. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of background on me, how I came to all of this. And this first video is gonna to talk to you a little bit about my background, my approach and why I should know what I'm talking about. And then in the next three videos, we're gonna break down different elements of how you can be successful staying fit, staying well, when you're after 40 years old as a guy. Now that may sound a little absurd, but it's really not. It's not the easiest thing in the world. And if you're a guy over 40 and you're struggling with taking off weight, putting on weight, motivation, all of those different elements that tend to plague us as we put on a little bit of age, you may find this of interest. So me, first, I'm a professor at UCLA. My specialization is kinesthetic learning as related to mindfulness-based practices. So body-based learning, biomechanics, and how that actually applies to our brain states. Um, I've got a bunch of training certifications and um, uh, was, I've got multiple black belts, I'm an eighth degree black belt. But the most important thing, honestly, uh, is my own experience. And I think that's ultimately what counts in anybody's world, is what is your experience? You can have all the book knowledge you want, but if you're not walking the talk, it doesn't mean a whole lot. I mean, you, you can preach it, but until you're actually in it, walking it, eh, I don't think it quite resonates as much. So, so let me tell you a little bit about where I came from. I grew up in Kentucky, and as you would anticipate, ate a Kentucky diet, which consisted of a lot of fried chicken, mashed potatoes, gravy, cheeseburgers, milkshakes, french fries, all that yummy stuff. And man, did I love it. Kentucky Fried Chicken was my thing. And um, I'm sure you can imagine that this is not something that's gonna ultimately contribute to good health very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so over time, yeah, I, I was an athlete. I was an athlete, I played basketball, played football, I started doing martial arts when I was a young guy, but I was not like Mr. Health. Um, I got involved with the wrong crowd. I started getting into drugs, started getting into booze, and uh, health was like the furthest thing from my mind. I just liked competing. So I ate whatever I wanted to, I drank whatever I wanted to, took whatever drugs I wanted to, I could, do pretty well as a competitive athlete, so I could get away with doing a lot of that stuff. When you're a young guy, a lot of times you can't. So I was naturally talented athletically, but it started to catch up to me. And I carried many of those habits over into adulthood. So I was fortunate. When I was 21, I sobered up. Grace of God, I eternally grateful for that because that moved me in the right direction. And that began a process. It began a process of really understanding what is relevant. What is relevant? It's how we feel, how we contribute ultimately. So I was always an athlete. I always trained. I had a stand as an actor for a while and didn't really care for it too much. And then in 1992, I opened up a gym in Beverly Hills. And this is after moving out, obviously, out to California. But a lot of the health habits had remained the same. I was a guy in my mid 30s, still in good shape still fighting or I came back and started, continued fighting at that time. And the health habits 
that I had developed as a young guy began to really detract from my health. I developed a heart problem, um, atrial fibrillation, and it was a very severe case of that. And um, I tried every way in the world to be able to manage that condition. It screwed me up royally. Um, anytime I would exert too much, bam, my heart would go into this very severe arrhythmia. All I could do is just lie down on the ground and just hope that it would be over, and it wouldn't be. Most of the time it lasted for 24 hours or more, and it became more frequent. I had it treated at cardiac ablation, so I had five of them to try to manage this condition. I did Chinese herbs, I did acupuncture, I did energy-based medicine, I did everything you could possibly imagine. I Ayurvedic medicine. The Eastern approaches to the practice ultimately helped, but my fifth ablation did the job. Now, the fifth ablation happened just two years ago. So along the way, it was this incredible journey. And I have to credit probably more than anything else, my wife, Super Joanne, because she was the one that constantly bugged me to change my habits, the way in which I was eating, the way in which I was approaching health in general. Now, all along, I practiced meditation. I had practiced the mind-body integration through the study of martial arts. But I was really missing a substantial part of the puzzle, which is eating well and what I would put into my body. She used to look at me, I would take my kids to McDonald's and slam down those Big Macs, Cokes, milkshakes, and she would look at me and go, what are you doing? How, you can't eat this garbage because you're just putting garbage chemicals into your body. And I just blow her off. But man, Eventually, I converted to vegetarianism. Um, I've been a vegetarian for, oh, I guess about 10 years now. And um, it works really well for me. Um, and the reason I do that is predominantly because I'm not comfortable with the way in which we kill animals. That's my primary reasoning behind that. So I know this is kind of departing from the path of good health and how we manage good health. It's essentially several factors. First is this thing. We have to align our mind. We have to get that together with our body. And in training intelligently, how do you train your body in a way that's gonna be ultimately beneficial for you as you age? I'm pretty dinged up. I've got some dinged up shoulders, got some dinged up knees, I've got, I've got a uh, compound tear in the medium meniscus on the right side. I've got a bunch of stuff going on, but I still have to train. And I still want to train because even though I'm in an almost 60 year old body, man, in my brain, I feel like I'm 24. So I want to be able to do this stuff. So the next several videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about logical progressions, taking a look at your own health, taking a realistic gauge of where you are, assessing that, and then figuring out where do you move forward and what's an intelligent way to move forward. So thank you for listening to the video. I just want to give you a little bit of background on me. Um, you know, there's a bunch of qualifications and all that stuff, but if, if that should suffice. If not, shoot me an email, seafooed at gmail.com. Happy to tell you a little bit more about my background. But um, I'll look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. So I'm going to do one of these per week for four weeks. And it's going to give you a little bit of homework, okay? So I hope you enjoy this one. And then uh, subscribe. Do that little bell thing or whatever it is that tips you off that lets you know we've loaded up another video. And then uh, it should notify you when the next one comes up. And then look at it. And then maybe we can make some modifications together. Hey, and if you're interested in joining us, we do online classes at Ekata Training Center. Just go to ekata.net. And it's all about mind-body integration through the study of Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. So uh, join us. Yeah, you might find that it's a wonderful journey for you, just like I have.